Hi, I'm Mikey Murray. I'm with the Revolutionary Art and Culture Residency, and I'm joined today by some of my favorite artists in Milwaukee. So I'm going to turn it over to y'all. If you could please introduce yourself, name, pronouns, zodiac sign, favorite color, whatever, <laughs> um, and then tell us a little bit about your craft. I am Liv. Um, she, her pronouns, identify as queer. Um, favorite color right now, orange, always changes. Usually it's green. I'm in an orange season. Um, and I'm a Gemini. And I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Amanda Ruby. Um, I'm a Virgo. She, her pronouns. Um, I'm a cat mom. And I do a lot of visual arts. So photography, painting mostly. I like to work in textiles uh, for texture and depth. Um, and yeah, I said I was a Virgo, right? <laughs> and I'm Jessica, uh, she, her pronouns, Leo, a visual artist. I bounce between digital art and watercolor painting, but I also work with resin to make jewelry. Uh, also a cat mom. And yes, did I miss a question? Nope. Okay. Uh, Liv, can you talk a little bit more about what you do? A uh, visual artist. I'm a painter. I do digital art as well. Awesome. Yeah. All right, so the next question is, when did you realize or begin to claim that you were an artist? Ooh, I guess I could go first. <laughs> um, I claimed that at a very early age, like maybe like five or six. Um, my sister, my older sister, she was an artist or she at least really enjoyed drawing and so on. Um, so then me being the little sister, I was like, oh, I just want to be like my like my older sister. So then I just stuck with it for like forever. <laughs> and then uh, elementary school, I remember, or kindergarten, I remember I used to draw on my homework and our teachers would return that with my to my parents and give me a bad grade. Not going to say what school. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then middle school, I went to art school. High school, went to art school. Went to Maya for college. And I just kept going forever. Um, so I would say I started identifying as an artist in high school. Um, I had always been kind of crafty and my grandma, she's a, was a K-5 teacher and, um, she's retired now, but she's always had us helping her, me and my sisters with like schoolwork and crafts and cut out this and make little models of that. And just like DIY projects all the time for like weddings and other celebrations. So I always had that side of me. Um, and then in high school, I got to actually like do art in a little bit more of an independent way. Um, so I really fell in love with it then. I tried to carry it on into college, but the practical side of me kind of won over and I studied business, which is very boring. Um, and I work in marketing now, which is very creative. So that kind of helps with that. Um, and then more recently, I started to really kind of uh, define myself a little bit more in my artist self versus the business or kind of more professional um, Amanda. Um, I just identified as an artist probably within the last year and a half. So I started art during the pandemic. So three years ago now. Wow. Um, and I always just kind of stuck to this insecurity of like, I'm not really an artist or I'm not there yet or I haven't created enough work yet um, to kind of take on that like Artist to me is like this beautiful labeled word, like artist just takes it up several notches. Right. So even when I'm around other artists, even around both of you, um, I sometimes feel like, am I, am I? But I finally got to that space where I'm feeling more confident in my artwork. Um, yeah, creating more. Um, yeah, I mean, no matter what avenue you go in, I just feel like I always want to stick to artists. I don't want to let any like, Thing define like even if you're like in business now right, and, right. like it doesn't define it and exactly. I it took me a long time to kind of mm -hmm. you know talk myself into that but I am a hundred percent an artist yes <laughs> all right so it is the end of women's history month so one of the questions I wanted to ask was what significance does your identity as a woman play in your art if at all I would say a lot. Um, I find myself drawing paintings of women and like yoga poses and like portraits and things like that. Um, and I grew up in just a very woman 
a driven um, family um, for a lot of reasons. So to me, woman is kind of the most powerful person in the family, the matriarch, as my grandma likes to call herself. Um, so I find a lot of inspiration in that for sure. Yeah, same. I draw a lot of women. I like to say that I don't know how to draw men or just like <laughs> masculine figures. <laughs> One, because I don't practice is what it is. I don't, I just don't. Um, the shirts that I'm wearing and that Mikey's wearing. Yay. Yeah. So the story behind her is, and it's fitting for spring. Um, so she's, um, Xochiquetzal, which is like the goddess of love and art and fertility in the Aztec mythology. Um, so that too, I draw a lot of like goddess queen like figures in all of my art. Um, always represented with like a crown, plants, whatever. Um, so yeah, it's super important to my art. It's my main subject. Um, I'm still, I draw very abstractly. I'd like to think my pieces are more genderless. Um, but I will say just what I can see in my art as a black woman and expressing my blackness through my art. Um, I do a lot of themes of like spaces that I necessarily didn't feel invited into as a black woman and create um, people and storylines where I invite myself into these spaces and live in these spaces as a black woman. So, yeah. All right, this is my favorite question, or one of them. Um, <laughs> was there a specific piece of art that you created or a moment in your career that made you go, oh yes, I'm undeniably that bitch? <laughs> and if so, what was it? <laughs> Ooh. Um, oh, <laughs> Okay. Talk about yeah, go go. You can share two. Because I definitely have one that happened very recently. Oh god, yes. (laughs) So me, my partner, uh, just recently moved into a new home, and I have an altar. So I have a lot of other art. It's not just my own art, but like there are arts of different goddesses, just very like important, like like empowered images of like women. And then for my, like, the centerpiece is this piece that I did, I think, back in 2016 or 17. So it's of a mother, and her hair is, like, huge, and there's, like, stars and constellations in it. And then she's, like, breastfeeding a baby. And then the baby's hair also has, like, stars and constellations in it. And I remember one time walking past my altar, and I was like, damn, I did that shit. Like, that that was me. (laughs) So it was very recent. So... Yes, that was my. <laughs> I love that you can create art and like step away from it and right. come back to it and be like, damn, I, that what? Like, <laughs> um, okay, I have two. I can't pick which one, but one of mine is my gallery night. So my gallery night at No Studios. Um, that's one of those things that I kind of committed to before I thought I was ready. Which sometimes you gotta. You just gotta yeah, push you gotta just do it. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I had this extravagant gallery night, and there was a moment during the gallery night where you know everyone's talking, everyone's laughing, enjoying everything. Everything was great and zen. Um, I remember having my glass of wine because I was so stressed, <laughs> like just <laughs> yeah. So uh, and I looked around and I was like, damn, like I have all this work to fill this space. I have. A community here to support me. Um, I have people having conversations around my art, which I think is beautiful. Like the conversations that are started around art, um, and it it was moving, very moving. Um, so that was the first time I knew I was that bitch. The second <laughs> time, <laughs> amazing. The second time, I actually just finished some work, so I bought some raw canvas, um, and it's almost six feet tall, huge. I'm not used to working on huge spaces and I took a huge break from digital work and um, I started painting again and I painted this huge, massive piece. I painted my first couch. I don't paint objects yet. I'm not there. Uh, Yeah. (laughs) I don't know how. I don't understand the concept of depth yet. I'm very flat, so. Yeah. Um, I painted a couch and just simply that couch, I was like, damn, <laughs> I think you're onto something. So that was the second <laughs> yes. time I realized I was that bitch. <laughs> uh, for me, it was probably pretty recently too, it was the biggest like moment for me. Um, I was in a gallery night at Walker's Point Center for the Arts 
and it was all about Puerto Rican artists, um, especially during Hurricane Maria and the pandemic and just all the things that Puerto Rico goes through um, as a not country. Um, and so I had a poem that the curator wanted me to include, but in a sculptural way. So I kind of created a piece for the, the, the writing piece I did that was more sculptural, but still took into account my painting skills. And it ended up looking like this DNA strand with the poem kind of written around. And then I uh, drew um, me and my sisters, which was kind of the theme of the poem was sisters and sisterhood. Um, and so I read the poem in the, in the opening event and that moment of just like feeling confident enough to say, okay, I'm gonna stand in front of all these people and read my poem, which is like maybe 60 seconds long, but like still, you know, be able to, yeah. I was like, <laughs> Am I ready? No, no question it. Just, just do it and don't think about it too much. So that was probably the biggest moment recently. That's so beautiful. Did you sculpt? Uh, it was paper. So it was like a, like a 2D paper kind of thing. It looked like a mountain-ish. But yeah. No. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, so if your art could speak, what would it say? Or if your art like had a playlist, what would it be listening to? Oh Lord, so much. I go all through music. Like it would just depend on the, the mood, the vibe at the time, I guess. I was actually thinking Miles Davis and like bad bitch music, <laughs> like <laughs> Megan Thee Stallion, City Girls. Like I like that balance because yeah. I sometimes like to think of like the creation or that creative moment is like right. jazzy, beautiful, elegant. But sometimes you gotta just get in your mode. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I love. Well, I'm. I don't know. I guess I'm just thinking of like what I've been obsessed with lately, and it's definitely been Cali Uchis. And I'm like, yeah, that matches. Yeah. <laughs> very like a lot of pinks, a lot of like soft colors. Very like central. Very. Oh, I don't yes. know. Like she's soft, but also a badass. Like. Yes. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm liking. That. That's what I'm going with. Uh, yeah. Now I'm thinking about. It, I would say probably Boma music. I really enjoy like a good. Uh, deep like bass beat um, that you can like you said kind of get into um, and I think it fits a lot of the kind of women that I that I draw wait what was the first part of the question we focused on the music <laughs> oh that, there was like a two-parter so oh, it was okay. like if your art could speak what would it say or if it could listen to music what would it listen to because um, I know some folks are like my art wouldn't say much or I don't know what my art would say so I wanted to have a mix um so if you could live or exist in one of your um, painting sculptures, uh, which one would you choose and why? So think of like your art mm-hmm. as like your own Marvel Cinematic Universe. <laughs> like what, what piece would you want to be in? Interesting. I have one. Um, I did a piece. It took me a really long time, but it was a bigger piece of painting on like a wooden chipboard that I had laying around. I was like, I'm just going to paint on this. Um, and so I started painting on it and it ended up being like another one of my little meditating girls um, by like a little mountainside river fountain thing, um, waterfall. And it was just in the forest. And I'm like, I just want to be in the forest, just chilling, living my best life, you know, very green, lots of plants. Now what I'm trying to think of, like, cause I know I have some that have a lot of plants, but the one that I'm going to is another like one of my goddess ones where um she just has like clouds going around her she has like um, fucking um mushrooms growing out of her nipples (laughs) and then there's more clouds beneath her it's just like a i don't know it's very celestial and i think that's what i'm radiating towards i'm like yeah i like that one but there's not a lot of color in it because that was one of um similar to the first one that I talked about the mother breastfeeding it's just like on brown paper and I just painted and drew with like black marker and black paint and then sprinkled like gold over it um so I think that one but I feel like I don't know I feel like I should pick something that's colorful too I can't think about it right now though I know this is a tough question um I was saying before I like to make storylines where I'm invited into the room and I take a seat at the table and that's kind of how I make a world where like my characters, I call them my friends, are comfortable. <laughs> um, um, so I'd like to think that all the spaces I create for my art pieces are 
a place I'd live in? I'm just trying to think of a specific one. That's a tough question. Damn, Mikey. <laughs> Would you say all your all your pieces like live in the same world, like in your head? Probably not. Okay. But it's only because I fluctuate with like emotions. Okay. So sometimes like the emotion that I put into a piece, most of the time it's sad. I know that's kind of heavy, but um, there are some happier pieces, but they're still not like living. I'm gonna think on this. Okay. <laughs> let me. Yeah. Let me write. <laughs> um, we'll circle back. <laughs> I feel bad because I know you were stressing about this next question too. What is the oh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, who are two to three local artists of any medium that you would love to collaborate with, or oh, who would you simply like to shout out because you enjoy their work? I didn't read this question. I also just glanced at it, so I didn't think about it. I was looking, I'm, so what I'm trying to do, just to be, I guess, transparent, I want to collaborate more, but collaboration yeah. sometimes stresses me out, right. so that's why the question stressed me out. Um, so I've collaborated so far with Bricklayers Club, a shout out to Brandon, um, and we did a shirt, a t-shirt collaboration, which was phenomenal. Um, and kind of stretched me in ways with just like communication and working through something. It was giving project, but it was very still artistically and creatively um, fueling. I personally want to work with more photographers. Right now, um, I'm working with a photographer, Kofi. She is Surreal Frames on Instagram. And I want to do mixed media. So I think in the future, what I'm looking towards is more photographers, collaborating with photographers in Milwaukee. And there's just so many, even Rodney, thinking of Rodney, I've collaborated with him before I was an artist and just a model. And that was kind of like my first introduction of creative collaboration. So yeah. Yeah. Shout out to September Born. Yeah, September Born on Instagram. <laughs> yes. Isn't it without the vowels or something? Yeah, there's no vowels no in vowels September. September. Yeah. Um, I would say if I were to collab with someone locally, I think CK Ledesma would be really cool to collaborate with. He um, is into all kinds of things, um, but I've seen his photography work and I've seen his more experiential installation work and that's all been really inspiring and I just feel like I can learn so much from him and I think we're interested in similar themes. Um, so that would be my choice. Shout out CK. Oh, this is hard. Probably because I didn't read the question earlier. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't practice. <laughs> um, I don't know about collaboration because I feel like, like you said, it's hard. It's Because I'm just like, I don't know how to do this. However, there is one thing that I thought would be pretty cool. Like if people just like, instead of like planning something, mm -hmm. like if, let's say two artists just started a piece and then just traded and then the person could just paint on top of it. Like, that's what I think okay. of when I yeah. think of collaboration. Like, I don't want to plan shit. Let's just do that trade and then, you know, just build layers on top of it because I think that would be pretty cool. So I guess now thinking about that, I think doing that with you actually would be really cool because oh, yeah. I like your shapes and, I don't know, just the boldness of it. I would love to collaborate! <laughs> um, but otherwise, I don't know, I haven't really thought about it. Um, I guess just... I want to do some shout outs, I guess, to some of my favorite local artists. Um, Natalia, most definitely. Um, Psyche, I know she's like trying to get back into painting, so I want to shout her out. Hopefully this is a little inspiring to her. Um, my sister Niche, uh, I think right now she's mostly focusing on like beadwork, but it's amazing. I don't understand how beads even work, but it's... <laughs> um, but yeah, those are some of my favorite and also some of my favorite people. So yes, shout out to Yay. them. Yay! All right, I'm going to shift gears a little bit. What has been the scariest moment of your career and how did you react or respond to that fear? Oof. Um, I guess currently. So I plan on cutting my hours at work in half by the end of the year. Just scary, really is. So right now that's what I'm dealing with, where I'm just like, what if you only make two dollars in December? <laughs> or th so that's like what I'm dealing with, and I don't know. It's just like, okay, so what are we gonna plan? That you, it's okay. You're not quitting your job fully. You're just cutting it in half in case you have a slow month. So that's kind of like what I'm trying to like keep telling myself, like you're not, you're not just jumping off the edge. You know, you're taking by baby steps. So that's still like what's holding me down a little bit. Yeah, you got this. 
Thank you. <laughs> it's all stressful. It's making me tear up. <laughs> no. It's fine. <laughs> Thanks. You got really far in this without. <laughs> Edit that out. <laughs> You're manifesting by even saying it out loud. I feel like saying it out loud around other artists on camera. It's like yes. this is gonna come to fruition. Thank you. I appreciate yeah. that because who it's hard. <laughs> Yeah, I would say something along similar lines for me. Um, I work in marketing as my day job, which is like a whole internal conflict sometimes. Um, Because marketing has a lot of power in a lot of different ways. Um, When you work in it, it can be overwhelming sometimes. But um, a couple years ago, like right before the pandemic, I actually left marketing work entirely. I just worked at Target and like did a bunch of painting and started writing a lot more and just like, I guess it wasn't like fearful, but it was kind of like a pivotal moment where I like really fully embodied more of the artist side of me um, and started making a lot more connections to help build that that person that maybe doesn't get to come out um, as much as I would like her to um, as an artist primarily. So yeah, and now I work, I didn't go half time, but I went to like four days a week at my day job so that I can make time for more content production and just trugging away at some of my paintings, which just take me forever to finish. Yeah. <laughs> That's always the tough production. Is just, yeah. there's some, I know this is derailing the conversation, That's but fun. like um, pumping out artwork and the pressure of just like social media and yeah. posting yeah. and selling is just, so overwhelming. And I think that's a huge part that becomes overwhelming when you're like, I think I'm going to take some hours, take a step back from work or cut some of my hours back. You're like, damn, that means I need to be a hundred percent for real, like an artist and really, you know, like pump out work. But I don't think pumping out work necessarily defines you as an artist. Mm -hmm. I think it's definitely a, a bumpy road. Like some months are good months for me. Some months I feel like shit and I do sell work and I'm not doing well or some, you know, some months are great. Um, speaking on jobs though, I work in corporate America. It's stressful. It's it's so stressful. (laughs) It's so stressful. I, I personally feel like my art would look a lot different if I didn't have a job. I think there's a lot of things that hold me back as a creative, just trying to like shift my world so many times in a day. Um, Sometimes I go to work and I'm like, you know, I feel like I have to be this, this cookie cutter person or like some, someone who's like acceptable, like Mm -hmm. someone I can, you know, it's just, it's just tough. There's a lot of things with that, but I think going back to what you said, you're going to be successful. Thank you. It's all you're going to you. have so much support behind you. I'm proud of you. Thank you. Um, it's a huge leap. It, it's, it's very, yeah. very scary. But I, on the other side of that is I think when you release those hours, there's going to be a beautiful input into yourself that you're going to see in your artwork. Like, Thank don't you. even worry. Like, it's going to, you don't see it now because you don't have the time to see it yet. But yeah. like, when you cut those hours back, it, it's gonna blossom into yeah. something beautiful. So I'll be at work and I'm like, I could be home. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, could be. Something. I could be, yes. And yeah. sometimes I'll be like, I'm gonna bring my sketchbook, my iPad, and then I don't work at sh- on shit at work because, you yeah. know, you, it's hard. Like, I work in an emergency department where, like, my station is just a hallway. So it's hard because I'm just like, well, I draw women and often nude, so I can't just be out here drawing this <laughs> shit. <laughs> so then I, if I do bring work, it's like, oh, I'm going to work on my 414 t-shirts, but it's not like what I actually like want to work on. So it's really mm-hmm. limiting, but I'll text Mikey. I'll be like, I could be at home working on some shit instead of being here. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's, okay. that's stressful. Mm. I think, what was it? The hardest? Just thing? like most like scariest moment in your career so far and how did you respond? I think my insecurities be kicking my ass y'all. I think my scariest moments are myself in my mind. I have been up and down with insecurity as of me within myself as an artist. And I think I'm still working through it. I'm, I'm better now for sure. Um, but I think sometimes like my mental just kind of gets to me and kind of like tells me like, I don't know, you're not that good of an artist or you're Jesus. not, you're not here yet Man. or you're not, you know, you need to prove more. Um, so I think I just have some internal conflict, but I'm working through those fears. So yeah. right now I think my next fear is going to be quitting my job. 
Um, I'm not there yet, um, but yeah, that's going to be a big, big leap. Yeah. And we gonna do it together when I get yeah. there. <laughs> we'll be sobbing on the phone together. Absolutely. <laughs> Y'all can celebrate by doing that collab trade-off <laughs> thing. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Literally, Fuck yes. Yeah. Do you, um, oh, do um, you, oh, sorry. No, go right ahead. Uh, do you guys find yourself like being your whole artist self when you're at work, or is that kind of like, are you compartmentalizing some of yourself when you're at work? I think, yeah, definitely, because. Mm-hmm. Um, I have so some of the nurses they bought like my 414 Milwaukee shirts and they wear them at work but I'm never like oh I did that like I get so shy about it because I don't know if it just doesn't feel like appropriate at work because they're like oh you can't sell shit while you're at work and I'm like does that count does it count if I call myself the artist that made the shirt you know is that selling product at work you know so I get all insecure about it so oh absolutely like there's one person uh he's a paramedic there and he caught me drawing. He's like, I didn't know you were an artist. I've been working there for six years with him. And this is like two weeks ago. He was like, I didn't know you drew. It's like, yeah, <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> Why am I apologizing? Like, but yeah, yeah, this is what I do. I don't know how I kept it a secret because I feel like I provoke myself. Not often, but a little bit, but I don't know. Do you get to express yourself as an artist through marketing? Through marketing? Um, um, in a way, but it's very limiting because you're being paid to serve the client and you right. have to give them what they're looking for. And so sometimes you can be too creative and they just want to kind of stay in their lane. Um, and even like in digital marketing in general, there's just so much restriction put on you by the industry and how you go about doing things that you're already kind of in a box to begin with. So it's kind of hard to break out. Um, and I don't know. It's just the whole idea of selling things for profit that internally I'm like, I know it's not, it's not defining who I am as a person, but also like depending on what kind of companies you work for, it can be a little bit more like um, kind of hitting your values in different ways. So yeah. Restrictions. I definitely feel the same way at work. Um, I will say my boss is pretty supportive though. I've talked to her about, being an artist, I invited her to my gallery night. She kind of is up to date like nice. on the things that are going on in my life. So um, I talked to her about that, which is good. I just think, I just don't think I'll ever be 100% me. I feel like that at work too, aside from being an artist right. though. Yeah. You know, like I just am like, I don't know if I will 100% be myself here. Yeah. And that's kind of just... It just kind of restricts you. It kind of mutes your your creativity, honestly. Yeah. It kind of takes away from you, but yeah. yeah. I see that. I see that. I have similar feelings here where, like, everyone knows that I'm, I'm an artist, right? But obviously, we're here to, we're all here to do a job. Mm-hmm. Um, so it kind of just puts a damper on everything to begin with. But this company that I'm at now is, like, the first place I've really, like, been more open and unapologetic about it. Um, yes. And I don't, like, promote myself within the company, um, that much, but I'll mention like an article I did here or like if I'm going to be at a show there or something like that. Um, and my boss does keep up and her not seeing me only as this professional marketer and not as so many more things has really like uh, built like a healthier relationship yes. at work with a leader. I definitely agree with the same with that here. It's been hard to find. Like, I don't know if you've ever worked in agency work, but like corporate America, this is... It's not fun. It's so structured too. Yeah. I'm like very... When I describe myself, I always want to be like, I'm very Gemini. I am very, <laughs> I am very Gemini. Like, structure and me do not, we just don't, it's hard. Like, schedules are very hard for me. That's why collaborations, like, the whole scheduling thing and by this time. And it's always been rough for me. Like, my roughest day at work is my office day. I work in retail. Mm-hmm. Um, is my office day because I have to, like, you know, sit down and go through reporting and it's so structured and every time I lay it out, I'm like, it's just, it's just not working. And I kind of wish there was a different way to learn in corporate America or a different way to be in corporate America. Yeah. Yeah. That's not something I'm trying to fight for right by myself or anything. <laughs> but <laughs> if there was a little bit more leniency, I mean, I would like that. Or I, if I expressed something super creative and didn't feel like I had to bite my tongue towards it or yeah. they were like, you're in some whimsical world or something, you know, like, what are you talking about? Like, I don't, yeah, it's just, mm-hmm. yeah. I don't know. I used to, so before I only worked at the hospital because I was working at the art museum and then also working at the hospital, like I was balancing both jobs. Worst part of my life, that shit sucked. 
never again. <laughs> On top of making art, like I was still doing like events. I had obviously create stuff so that I can print it and so on. And then I would go work full time at the hospital. And then on my week offs, because I worked seven days on, seven days off, I'd go work at the art museum. Wow. It was hard. I don't know why I did that. I'm burnt out already. Um, <laughs> but I don't know, like working at the hospital, like you get to meet a lot of different people because obviously like, oh, oh, they all went to med school or whatever. But then there's mm, that's not all they do. Like some of them are like, oh yeah, I make t shirts also. And I'm like, oh, you have time for that? I'd be so fucking stressed. Cause I don't even know how you guys can like take care of sick people and injured people and then go home and be like, yes, I am going to go home and make some <laughs> art. <laughs> like, holy shit, I would have been so fucking burnt out. But then working at the art museum, cause I was a server, I, was a, um, I worked in their cafe and their coffee shop. And then um, also doing um, uh, catering serving. So a lot of the people that I worked with either went to art school, because um, obviously, so they applied yeah. to work at the art museum. I don't know why we thought, like, not to talk shit. Oh, here we go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, <don't Yes>. <laughs> I don't know why we thought, like, working there was in a way going to, like, put our foot in the door or something, because it barely did. Like, I don't know. I, and I don't know if I'm just a little salty, because I was working there almost full time and then they'd have like these events like ma'am after dark and it was years into me working there there somebody was like no it was actually with luna w when i was in the collective with luna luna was invited to um be to display art and sell art during one of the ma'am after darks and i was just like this is what they do and i've never been told like hey you should apply to do this like by any of my like co-workers or my bosses or even just like anybody else and all of them knew that I was an artist but I think also me being like oh well I don't know if I'm allowed to because I'm technically not a full-time artist but then I did so good vending that night I was just like I'm gonna do this shit again and then I think the following time I applied um by myself and I got in and I was just like I was so no I was a little salty because I was just like damn no yeah, one ever like put you on yeah yeah like gatekeeping you know, like, mm, you're just a server, you're not really, a, you know, so it was just giving that, and I was just, ugh. but then, shout out to being invited as, like, a collective to vend and display art, because otherwise, I don't think I would have, like, actually done it. Mm. Yes, yeah, and that was when you bought a bunch of art, and then you lost it. Oh, oh all <laughs> right, that oh. was, <laughs> it was my 23rd birthday, I was very drunk. Um. <laughs> you still got the money, though. <laughs> Did um, I ever replace those? I can still replace them. Girl, it's been <laughs> Anyway, we're on to our last two questions. Um, so I recently, like within the last year or two, learned about um, Stendhal or Stendhal syndrome, which is basically like this Italian psychiatrist in like 89 was like, sometimes art is so overwhelming and so beautiful, like people's heart rate picks up or they faint or they hallucinate or like just their body physically reacts to said beauty. Um, and I found out about this cause I had posted on Facebook and I was like, y'all ever look at art and just want to throw something? Like you just want to <laughs> physically yeah. like do something? And so even if y'all have never passed out per se, um, <laughs> Can you think of a time you were looking at art or like watching a movie or just w like some form of art and you were like, physically you were like, I cannot contain the joy in my body looking at this. Yes, I have one. You weren't you were there, but it was in New York. Um, we took a trip to New York together, um, a getaway trip, but it was like a friend bonding trip, yeah. but also like a creative trip. Um, and there was a day which is kind of funny, on trips I like to spend days apart, like alone. Um, and we did like a day apart day. Um, we both went our own separate ways. And I went to the Basquiat Museum that was put on by his sisters. Um, of course, huge fan. But there was this room. Ah, it's like crazy. There was this room that they recreated that was like his studio space. And when I tell you it was so intimate, like use paint brushes on the ground, like they had his, like, I don't think it was his actual cigarette buds, but like cigarette buds on the ground. And like, it was just so pieces of paper, scribbles, like not even full art pieces. And it wasn't behind glass. It wasn't 
It didn't look made up. It literally looked like someone's studio, their studio. Um, and it really moved me because I just, I'm a fan of their work, but I feel like my heart race is, thinking of it is making my heart beat faster. Yeah. Um, I think when we see artwork, we're of course like so moved and taken aback, but like sometimes you don't think of like the space people create art in and what it looks like and how intimate it is. It almost felt like my eyes weren't supposed to be seeing this space and like, I'm a huge like, even specifically the cigarettes too did something to me. I'm working on quitting right now, but I'm a art, I think art, cigarettes, and wine go hand in hand. I think the whole <laughs> rotation of like pay for hours, smoke a cigarette outside, drink my wine. And it just brought such a human element um, to him. And he's just so consumed and everywhere. And like sometimes I hate it. Um, so it was just good to have that intimate moment. Mm-hmm. And I cried. Yeah, Amazing. It was it was beautiful. I remember going back to Mikey like <laughs> I was moved today. <laughs> so yeah, that's that was my experience. Yes. Um, I another shout out. I forget her last name though, and I feel really bad. But Jasmine, she was one of the co-founders of a uh, Bronzeville. So her and I went to my ad. Um, we, we overlapped, so she was a senior when I was a freshman. Her senior thesis, like to this day, I'm still like, oh my God, I'm so blown away by it. So she drew, I think it was five or six. Um, it was women in like different like stages. Like one, I think was in her youth. So it was like beauty, one was like a bride, one was an elder. And they were just, and she had like these like different symbols like either flowers and different animals and I still go back to those I actually hit her up like maybe last month and was like hey did you ever like make prints off that and can I still like possibly buy them like I still think about that and I don't know if I was like I can't remember if I like cried or anything but I remember that being like one of the most inspiring moments while I was at my ad during my freshman year where I was just like yeah this is the type of fucking art I want to do like very like empowering very like feminine just like huge and yeah so shout out to her I forget her last name but Jasmine yes (laughs) cool um for me I would say it was um an installation piece that CK Lavesma did at Haggerty Museum last year um and we went as part of the revolutionary arts and culture residency last year um, and this is big table and the whole idea of the installation, um, there was other pieces on the wall too, but the whole table was like filled with a traditional, um, celebration of a young person passing. Uh, I forget the name of the actual celebration, but, um, there was like very familiar desserts and, um, unique fruits from the island and just very intentional in the way it was set up. And then there was live music. Um, that would also be played at a celebration like this on the island. And so it was just very nostalgic and just brought me back to a place. I've never been to one of these celebrations in real life, but it felt very familiar to what I'd already experienced. Um, and yeah, it was just really awesome. I I remember him taking pictures and I'm just like in the corner, kind of in the middle of the <laughs> stocks. And I'm just like, so I don't want to be in the way, but I also don't want to be far away. So yeah, that was, that was an amazing moment. Uh, what was that? Where was the? Oh, it was at the Haggerty at, at Marquette. Okay. Yep. So this is a small, a smaller gallery. Um, but I know that uh, in that group of artists had been working on that stuff during the pandemic, so that was kind of their showing of those projects. And there was a few other pieces in that showing as well. There were some really, really large uh, portraits, paintings of women dancing in different African traditional dances. And that was also like very bright and colorful and just like, wow. So yeah, love it. I went to a frequent one in Tijuana. Yeah. And so it has like some of the- There's so many in Milwaukee too. Like I didn't realize all the little galleries. I just went to one not too far from here, Hawthorne Contemporary, which had a really amazing show on right now by an, um, an artist that's an immigrant from Afghanistan and then a second generation um, Indian woman. Um, and they did a, kind of a dual. Hawthorne? Where is Hawthorne, it? it's on Fifth Street, kind of down the street. I think it's Fuel Cafe, it's down the street. Oh, I didn't, what? I had no idea. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's really kind of nonchalant type of looking building, but um, it's close to Var Gallery. I think it's connected to Var Gallery. Okay. 
Good to know. Yeah. Love that. Um, so this is the last question slash prompt. Um, and so I'm really big on manifestation, um, affirmations, there's scripture, there's historical and cultural like documentation about like if you say something or speak something, you know, power of the tongue, whatever you want to abide by it, um, you speak something and you make it real. So what I want y'all to do um, is take a look at the camera and I want you to make a declarative statement um, of something you want to make true for 2023. Ooh. Oh, shit. <clears throat> okay, I'm not going to. <laughs> <laughs> not you clearing your throat like <laughs> Wait, not ready. <laughs> so first, um, in 2023, I would like to be in at least one more art show, either as a group or individual, but I'm going to make it happen. I have pieces that I got to finish, so we're going to do it. That's a good one. See, because I was, okay, so that's one thing that I wrote down on, like, my 2023 goals, like, whether it be goals or whether it be, like, art ideas. So one was apply for more gallery shows. So I'm going to speak on that because I haven't yet, but I still have so nine more months, <laughs> eight more months. So that's one thing for sure. Maybe I don't think I'm ready for a solo one yet. Um, Ooh, but yeah, you shut are. Up. Shut up. Definitely ready. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'd like to be in more shows. I think I was in one or two last year and I was like, damn, I missed this. It's been a while. And also just... Uh, again, like I'm transitioning from like full-time employee to full-time artist at the end of the year. So speaking on that, like we're going to make that shit happen. You're also already a full-time artist. I know. I, you know what I mean? Like we're <laughs> my primary source of income. There you go. Yes. Um, this is hard. Okay. Um, <laughs> well, I just got a studio space. I mean, so uh, in... 2023 I want to commit to creating more art and painting and working on bigger pieces I'm thinking this is something that's very ahead probably beyond 2023 but I want to work on like a small mural so I just want to work on expanding the space I take up as an artist yeah and I commit to that in 2023 all right I want to say thank you to y'all y'all are clearly my fave <laughs> and thank you to you thank you no problem this, on. this feels good yeah told y'all it's gonna be good so thank you again yes. check out oh wait where can people find y'all where can people check out your work yes. <laughs> shameless plugs um i'm live also live mke on instagram i have a website big cartel dot live mke dot com where i sell prints um, or you can email me, livemke at gmail.com. Cool. Cool. Um, you can find me mostly on Instagram, a.ruby, R-U-B-I, Luciano, L-U-C-I-A-N-O underscore art. That's mostly where I'll post stuff. You can DM me. Uh, I think there's a link to email me on there as well. Um, I do have a website. Um, I'm still working on the shoppable portion of the website but I have a blog as well and lots of photography on there so you can learn more about me on my website which is arubiluciano.net a-r-u-b-i luciano.net you can also check out Amanda's work on genre urban arts yes. as one of the cohort yes. members amazing um the platform I use the most is Instagram so I have two so I have Heroin illustration, heroin like the female hero spelled with an X instead of an H. Um, so that's just for my illustration, my artwork. And then I have hero resin, um, also spelled with an X, um, for my resin. Um, and then I have a website where I sell all my products, art prints, t-shirts, totes, uh, resin accessories, and that's heroinillustration.com. Um, and then I also have a Facebook page that I have connected to my Instagram. So that's really the only way I use it. It's just when, whatever I post to Instagram, I'll post it on there, but yeah. So Instagram primarily, my website, heroinillustration.com and Facebook also Heron Illustration. All right. Shout out to John Urban Arts. Shout out to Dream Lab for letting us, uh, film yeah. here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs>